Warren Buffett is criticized a lot for his views on modern digital assets such as Bitcoin or NFTs. He has called Bitcoin a worthless asset that doesn't produce anything, and he wouldn't buy all of the Bitcoin in the world for $25. Even when people were willing to pay up to $40,000 per coin and its total capitalization crossed the trillion dollar mark, Buffett thinks that's nonsense. It's not the first time he has criticized a new emerging technology so harshly. If you go back to the dot-com bubble, he held similar views about internet companies. His close friend Bill Gates tried multiple times to convince him to invest in tech companies such as Microsoft, but his answer was the same every single time. He has missed many great opportunities, from Amazon to Netflix to Tesla. Each of these stocks grew by a few thousand percent at least, a $1,000 investment in Tesla when it went public would today be worth around $225,000. A $5,000 investment would have made you a million dollars. A few million dollar investments into these companies would be worth at least hundreds of millions of dollars. Despite the fact that he has missed so many opportunities, his net worth is over $100 billion at times when the economy is falling into a recession and the stock market is plummeting. In fact, during the last recession back in 2008, he was named the richest person in the world, toppling even Bill Gates. But besides crypto, tech and NFTs, there is another industry Warren Buffett has always avoided, the housing market. Believe it or not, Warren Buffett never invests in real estate. The only real estate he has ever purchased is the house he bought in 1958 in Omaha, Nebraska for $31,500, the equivalent of roughly $290,000 in 2023 dollars, where he has lived since then. So the natural question is, why the most successful investor in history never invests in real estate? Why does he avoid real estate, even though real estate is the safest investment out there? Does Warren Buffett know something that we don't? We will answer all of these questions and many more. But before we do that, give this video a thumbs up and let's find that out. You can say what you want about Warren Buffett's way of investing, but it won't change the fact that he's done really well over the past 20 years, outperforming the S&P 500 by 84%. He's been in the stock market for a long time and has made a lot of successful investments. Once, someone asked him about buying a house, and he said it's a good idea if you plan to stay in one place for a long time. He even called a 30-year mortgage the best thing ever. But if he thinks it's such a good investment, why doesn't he invest in real estate, especially when the housing market crashed? There are six reasons. First, real estate is different from the stock market. It's like running a full-time business. It's not just about having a property, you have to take care of it and make mortgage payments even if you can't find renters. Plus, things break, and during tough times, it can be hard to find renters for a while. Warren Buffett didn't go into real estate because he knew it would take up a lot of his time, and he wanted to focus on finding great investments. To be clear, he did invest in real estate, but mostly through something called real estate investment trusts, which are like stocks. He owns a big part of a company called Store Capital Core, which is a real estate investment trust. The second reason Buffett avoids real estate is that it's tough to find good deals in the market. Here is how you make a great investment. You have to find a great business that's inaccurately priced or priced lower than it actually costs for one reason or another. It could be a business that has a perfect foundation that can easily scale, or it might have developed a technology that will bring massive profits once it's produced at massive levels. The stock market is filled with inaccurately priced stocks, especially during a crisis. When people panic and start selling, the sell-off crashes prices. Interest rate hikes scare off investors, for example, and they start massively selling off their stocks to the point where Apple stock, for instance, fell by around 25% from April to June. Did Apple lose a quarter of its workforce in a few months? Did its sales drop by 25% in a few months? No. The panic drove the market down. So even great businesses suffered. That's why it's much easier to find a great deal in the stock market than in real estate. First of all, prices in real estate don't fluctuate that fast. Yes, we have real estate crashes from time to time, but they happen once every one or two decades. 
and if there is a great deal on the market, a real estate agent in the area will most likely close the deal for himself before everyone else finds out. We don't have a real estate exchange like we do for stocks, where you can go through multiple properties from the comfort of your office. Because unlike real estate, companies have to go through a lengthy and harsh process of getting approved to be able to list their stocks in the stock market. They are also required to publish their financial statements every quarter, which makes it possible for Buffett to have a competitive advantage when finding great deals in the market. Real estate doesn't make a lot of money. It basically gives you a place to live, and that's about it. Sure, some fancy places might charge $10,000 per night, but not many people can afford that. On the other hand, a business can keep growing and making more money forever. Buffett bought 5% of Apple in 2018 for $36 billion. In just a few years, when Apple became worth $3 trillion, his share went up to $160 billion. He also got regular payouts from Apple, around $775 million each year. You can't do that with real estate, and that's not even his best deal. Back in 1972, Buffett spent $25 million on C's Candy Company. Since then, it's given back $1.35 billion to his company, Berkshire Hathaway. Even after counting the $32 million Berkshire put into the business, that's still a crazy good return on investment. The third reason is that there's just more money in the stock market than in real estate. It's a plain fact. The United States real estate market is around $3.7 trillion. On the other hand, the stock market is around $93 trillion. The housing market is a fraction of the stock market. That's why there is not a single real estate investor among the top 10 richest people in the world. All of them have invented something or started some kind of business. In fact, the richest real estate investor is Xiao Qi, a 91-year-old real estate magnate who is the 29th richest person in the world with a $28.6 billion net worth. He is not just an investor. He is a real estate developer based in Hong Kong. The richest real estate developer in the US is Donald Bren, with a net worth of just $17 billion. Despite all the opportunities in the stock market, Buffett is aiming to take the best advantage of his time and skills. If he can make over $100 billion by investing in the stock market, why go to real estate? What made him so successful in the first place was his commitment to his strategies and principles. He never jumps to different assets just because they're hyped. Maybe that's the most important lesson we can learn from him. Buying a house is a great decision if you are planning to stay somewhere for a long time, but getting into real estate is a business. And the question is, do you want to start such a business? If the answer is no because you are in a different business, there is no point in getting yourself into a business in which you are neither competent nor passionate. A fourth reason Warren Buffett refrains from investing in real estate is its lack of liquidity compared to other asset classes like stocks. In simple terms, liquidity is how quickly you can turn an investment into cash. With stocks, you can sell your shares almost instantly in the stock market and have the cash in hand often within the same day. Real estate, on the other hand, is a different story. Selling a property can take months or even years, especially if the market conditions aren't favourable. This slow process makes real estate a less attractive option for someone like Buffett, who values the ability to move quickly and capitalise on market opportunities. In the fast-paced world of investing, having assets that can be readily converted to cash gives an investor flexibility and agility. For Buffett, who often makes large investments and needs the ability to respond swiftly to market changes, the slow liquidity of real estate is a significant drawback. This preference for liquidity is a key part of his investment strategy, allowing him to stay agile and responsive in the dynamic financial landscape. Another key reason Warren Buffett steers clear of real estate investments is what you could call money maneuverability or, in more formal terms, capital allocation flexibility. Think of it like this. Buffett loves having the freedom to quickly move his money around, like a chess master moving pieces on a board. He needs to be able to jump on a good opportunity or pull out if things aren't looking great. 
Real estate is sort of like having your money stuck in quicksand. It's slow to move. Buying or selling a property isn't something you can do overnight. It's a long process with lots of paperwork, meetings, and waiting around. For someone like Buffett, who might spot a great investment opportunity and wants to act fast, this slow pace is a big no-no. In the stock market, on the other hand, Buffett can play his money moves much faster. He can buy or sell stocks in a blink, shifting his investments here and there as he pleases. This speed is super important for making the most of market ups and downs. When the market is like a roller coaster, being able to move quickly is a huge advantage. Yet another reason Warren Buffett avoids real estate investments relates to his principle of sticking to his circle of competence. This concept is central to Buffett's investment philosophy, emphasizing the importance of investing in areas where one has deep understanding and expertise. Buffett is a firm believer in investing in what you know and understand, which has been a cornerstone of his success. Buffett's expertise lies in evaluating and understanding businesses and their potential in the stock market. He has spent decades honing his skills in analyzing company financials, market trends, and economic indicators to make informed decisions. This deep-rooted understanding of businesses and market dynamics is not something he's developed in the realm of real estate. Real estate investing requires a different set of skills and knowledge, including understanding local market conditions, property management, and the intricacies of real estate financing and development. This is a world apart from analyzing corporate balance sheets or predicting market movements. Buffett has often spoken about the dangers of stepping outside one's circle of competence, as it can lead to misjudgments and increased risk. This adherence to his circle of competence allows Buffett to make more informed decisions, reduce risk, and optimize his investment strategies. It reflects a disciplined approach to investing, where understanding and knowledge form the bedrock of decision making. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing.